Minnesota Governor Tim Walz was just named the co-chair of President Biden's bipartisan Council of Governors. The Republican co-chair is Governor Mike DeWine of Ohio. And the new co-chair of the President's Council of Governors is live in studio. Governor Tim Walz, thank you so much and congratulations yeah, for that. No, thank you, Esme. It, it's a privilege to do it, but it's timely in the work that we have to do. This is the interface between the federal governments and states. Um, around our National Guard in particular, but around things like um, cybersecurity and public safety, which we see these heartbreaking stories. And, and every governor, when we get on the phone, it's happening everywhere. Right. And, and we need to find answers. And it is clearly happening everywhere. But let me ask you, as governor, can the, sta can the governor really do anything about this? Can the state really do anything about this? Because that's what people are calling yeah. on you to do. Well, the state can be partners in this. They absolutely can. And, and to be Candid, this is personal for me. One of the grandfathers of one of the children who died has become a good friend of mine. And, and he is not just heartbroken, he's angry. He's angry that this happened and he's angry we haven't found who it was. The state's role, we have the state patrol, well that's our, uh, our predominant um, on the trunk highway system. But we can help with BCA, we can help with information. We're using federal relief dollars um, to pump money and we put 15 million in, into public safety on the front end, making sure that we're breaking up these, um, whether it's gang activity, or whether it's trying to figure out why there's so many guns on the street and, and give support to local police. And you heard Chief Arredondo. So you can put money into local police and local can, efforts to, to put, help them. But it, yeah. we're, you're not talking National Guard here. Well, the, the role of the National Guard can be when you have large-scale civil uh, disturbances, you can use those type of things. But the National Guard is not authorized um, as a police force. They have to be accompanied by police. They can do certain things when the situation is large or it's there. But that's not the long-term fix. The long-term fix is working in partnership with these local communities, supporting local police, supporting local interveners that are that are out there on the street. And then we go, we have to go back upstream. Um, why do we have so many kids with, with guns in their hands um, instead of doing things we want them to do? Right. So the state can help assist. I do want to ask you about uh, State Representative John Thompson, who was pulled over in St. Paul for not having, or having a suspended driver's license, actually, that he was missing the front uh, of his car, the uh, license plate. But there are real questions about what kind of information he provided to the Secretary of State. Yeah. He has never had a Minnesota driver's license. Uh, he is, uh, said that he was racially profiled by the St. Paul Police. Chief Todd Axtell, who was looked at the video, said he, there absolutely was no racial profiling. It was by the book. I know this isn't, you know, <laughs> your responsibility, but as, as yeah. the leader of, of this state, what is your comment? Well, first of all, I, I do believe that elected representatives need to be held to a higher standard. I've got 20 years of tax returns out there that anybody can go online today and find. I think you should be held to that higher standard. I don't know all the facts in this, but, but I think Minnesotans deserve to know what happened. Um, if you're going to be responsible for writing the laws, if you're going to be asking people to do things, there is a responsibility for you to follow them. So um, in this case, I'm, you know, I'll wait and pass judgment when it gets there, but I, I think the default position is always transparency and always uh, an expectation by the public. You mean you releasing should, the videotape of that I, arrest? Because yes, it, it's up I'm, to him. Chief Axtell says it... It's, it's Representative Thompson's choice, but I'm a big believer that, and we've talked about this, and we just funded for the State Patrol and the DNR, body camera footage should be released in all situations, not just where it exonerates the police or if it you know, shows something the police did wrong. I believe it's in all cases of this, and, and that's the situation that the public wants to know. And the public, once they see these things, they can make up their, their mind of what happened. And I think you clear a lot of this up by releasing that. If we're going to ask the police to be releasing the video footage and everything, I would have an expectation we would release them in all cases. All right. One of your commissioners was forced out by Republicans, Laura Bishop, uh, the Commissioner of Pollution Control Agency. Basically, this is over the state's mission to enforce California emission standards by the year 2025. You're not happy about this. No, first of all, it will be the 16th state to do it. Um, the manufacturers of internal combustion engines are already moving to plug-ins. This is a smart thing to do. The consumers get all the choice in this. You don't have to buy one if you don't want one. And this went through the whole process. It's all legal on this. They disagree with climate change. So instead of doing the right thing and making the case and, and, uh, and trying to pass legislation, they uh, went after a, a 
exemplary public servant who is qualified, comes from a chief executive at Best Buy, someone who um, is highly regarded. Probably was making a lot more money at Best Buy. Oh my goodness gracious, it's it, to recruit these people who run these agencies and what they go through, this is about public service and to put them through that and, and in such a way that it was disingenuous that no one knew the special session ended and then they came back literally almost in the dark of night to remove a qualified executive who is giving her time and her effort um, to the state of Minnesota all around climate change. It's not the way to do business. They're angry with me and, and what they should do is focus it on that. But this idea that I can't hire the best people around me, they've done the same thing and gave threats to Jan Malcolm because of COVID. They've done it around Jennifer Ho um, because of the exemplary job. Probably nobody better in the country around housing. Um, it's just not the way we should be doing business. All right, I do want to ask you about the special emergency powers. You no longer have them. Yep. Uh, did you overstay your emergency powers, do you think? No, I think the statistics show that Minnesota fared better than any state in the Midwest around COVID response. We're now showing that we performed above average economically and we're recovering um, eighth fastest growing economy in the country. Um, I think we timed it right. One of the things was I kept asking for months for the legislature to take over some of these responsibilities. It took them a lot of months to take over eviction moratorium. And the big sticking point was $45 million in federal assistance that was dependent on us being in that. And I was able to work out that deal. We asked for the 1st of August. I think Minnesota have seen that. Right. It got us to 70% vaccination, one of the top 15 states. Yeah. So I think the timing was right. It became more of a talking I, point. I think the Republicans might have a different view on that in terms of giving away the powers. But I do want to ask you about something else. An extraordinary $1.2 billion <laughs> is going into Minnesota education. 2.45% more per pupil yeah. in this coming year and 2% the following year. What, is, what are families out there going to see as a result of this? Well, it's going to stabilize their schools, but more importantly, we're going to start innovating. So no layoffs. Right, you think? With no layoffs, it yeah. shouldn't be. And, and, and schools are run locally. There'll be different things. I asked the legislature to try and do this in January, but schools are adaptive and innovative. Um, our children, we'll get them back, give them opportunities. There's going to be plus sides to things that happen in COVID. They're resilient. They've learned some new skills, but we know there's downsides. There's money in there for mental health. There's money in there for the social emotional learning. And then there's money in there to catch up on the content areas and, and focusing on teachers of color. We know that Minnesota performs best in the nation, except when it comes to our students of color. And all of this ties in together. So I'm very proud of this. Um, about a two decade uh, it has been since we've made this type of investment. I'm gonna go out this week and, and start listening to these local communities. But I think this is that return to normalcy that this COVID recovery budget starts to get us to. All right, talking about COVID, how concerned are you about the Delta variant? Because I know that there are people who work for you who are very talented and very yeah. qualified, who are very concerned about some of the counties where there's a very low immunization rate. Yeah, as I said at the start of COVID, if you look to other states, it was like looking into the future and you eventually became them. If you look to what happens if you have low vaccination rates and the variant becomes the dominant one, it looks like Southwest Missouri, where hospitals are overrun again, death rates are up. The, the country has gone above 20,000 for the fifth day in a row. We have this thing whipped. We have it right on the ropes. We have it if now long-term maintenance that we can vaccinate in, you know, uh, hospitals and, and pharmacies, but to leave these pockets that are unvaccinated, we're putting a lot of people at risk. And I worry that when we come back in the fall, we go back inside, our schools start again, and we have counties that are not above 70%, they're at 40%, um, you're going to see a repeat of what you're seeing in Oklahoma, parts of Colorado, parts of uh, Missouri, where the rates are starting okay. to climb again. So we should be concerned. All right, and finally, I, I've heard you say a number of times if anybody is unhappy with you, they are more than welcome to run against you. Well, it looks like uh, Senator uh, Gazelka is going to may take you up on that. Were you, was that invitation extended to him I, as well? It's to all. I said um, it's a privilege to do this job. We do the best we can. Um, it's one thing to stand on the sidelines and critique. It's another to have to make decisions that impact both public health, public safety, our education. Um, I always say that uh, Politics will follow good policy, and, and I certainly look forward to a robust debate and am and, and proud of Minnesota standing as one of the best states as we dealt with COVID, one of the best states in economic recovery. And now we can tackle some of these other issues that have to happen, and I'm proud that the president uh, tapped me to work with Mike DeWine to lead governors, especially around this issue of public safety. All right. Uh, anything, when you look back, especially in the emergency powers, anything you regret or wish you'd done differently? 
I wish and hindsight would, is 2020. No, it is. I wish they would have got more buy-in because I don't think it needed to be this divided. And, you know, the hindsight is 2020. We learned so much about this. The modeling that the Mayo Clinic and others were doing became so good by last summer we could predict this. But you think um, trying to get buy-in, we were Republicans who were saying end the emergency powers, they were saying that in October of last year, right before we spiked out. I wish there was something I could have done to get more buy-in in that. I don't think it would have divided our states, and I think that would have saved lives. So I'm, I'm racking my brain to how do we reach across the aisle more on these issues that shouldn't be political. Well, Governor Tim Walz, uh, thank you so much. Congratulations on being named to this co-chair, and thank you for coming in this morning. Thanks, Esme. All right.